I have the great pleasure now of being joined by Dr. Barbara Kahn, recipient of the prestigious Banting Medal for Scientific Achievement. Kudos to you on that. A great honor, and you are also giving a very important lecture here. Would you give me an overview, please? Yes, I'm, I'm very excited about the lecture. What I decided to do was to sort of start with a little bit of a historic perspective, meaning that we started the studies more than two and a half decades ago. And at that time, science was less advanced in many different disciplines, and we really didn't appreciate a lot of things that we take for granted now. So we focused a lot of our work on the adipocyte, the fat cell. And when we started our studies, all we really knew about the fat cell was that it was a good storage depot for lipid. But what we and many people in the field have participated in this, you know, what the field has learned over the last two and a half decades is really phenomenal. So I'm sort of going to go through why did we start these studies, which had to do with observations we made in fat cells from people, normal people and people with obesity or type 2 diabetes. And we saw certain functional biochemical signaling changes, and we wanted to understand how important was that for the whole body, how important was that for the risk for getting type 2 diabetes. And so we delved into it from a molecular point of view, and then that has really led us to discovering new molecules that are secreted from adipocytes, and even most recently, a novel class of lipids that we didn't know existed that are in all of our tissues. We've measured the levels in mouse tissues and human tissues. And these lipids seem to be low in people at risk for type 2 diabetes and people who have type 2 diabetes. So we're studying the biologic effects of those lipids, and we really would like to eventually be able to restore those lipid levels in people who are at risk for diabetes. You're both scientist and physician. As clinicians are listening to the critical scientific research, how do you want them to move forward to apply some of that information to their very own patients? Yes. You know, occasionally when um, we publish a paper uh, that has a big finding, there will be press releases, and invariably I have patients emailing me asking if they can get that molecule or, you know, if it's a drug yet. And I, I think one of the things the field really needs to figure out is how to translate some of these basic science observations into clinical trials more quickly. So for the clinicians, and I am a clinician, as you said, I am an endocrinologist and a diabetologist, I think what's important is there are new ideas, new targets, new concepts on the horizon. We have drugs on the market now for type 2 diabetes that we never imagined would be mechanisms leading to drugs, you know, 15 years ago even. So there are advances taking place. Now, can we keep up with the rapidly increasing, you know, hundreds of thousands of people developing type 2 diabetes. That is a challenge. It is such a critical problem in our country yeah. and the rising numbers. So at this point, where do you imagine the research to be going in the future? Well, I think that um, we need to intervene early. So early means if we can identify people who are at risk for diabetes and metabolic disease or in the early stages of the disease before there's time for, uh, for complications to occur and so on. And how do we do that? Well, we need new biomarkers as well as new treatments. And people talk a lot about individualized medicine. Um, I, I think that's a very important topic that could be a subject of another interview, but it may be that certain kinds of people will respond to certain interventions more than others. I think we can't um, forget that lifestyle changes are critical. 
and to the extent that we can make our city safe so people can walk to school and you know people can be more active outdoors and so on those are very important elements as well absolutely that's the big picture thank you for all you do dr khan thank you